yet another early morning in Cancun. Uh, it's 5.30 right now and we're getting picked up for a private tour because if you go to Cancun or anywhere in the Yucatan Peninsula, you need to go see some Mayan ruins. And there are a lot to choose from, but we're going to the big one, Chichen Itza. Um, we're getting a van tour. And on the way back from the tour, we uh, hope to go jump in some cenotes and uh, see what else we can find. So it should be a fun little tour. We just got to wake up early to do it. So hopefully we can beat the crowd and hopefully I can get some sleep in the van. Same thing, the main gods were the planets. 
the sun, the moon, and Venus. No human sacrifice. They play a game with the hip, the arm, the head. Actually, that game was a ceremonial. Wow. They play the game during the eclipse, the solstice, or equinox as a special celebration without any kind of human sacrifice. And everything was okay. The pyramid was not there. The Chichen is what I'm talking about right now. It's the observatory, which is the oldest building, Lake Classic. The Nunnery, the one we call today the church, which is the offering place. The medicine house and the small ball court where they play the game. That was the real Chichen Itza. Amigos, everything was okay. Happy people, one more time. They have water, they have everything. The hunting. But something happened one more time. It changed the history one more time. Around the year 1000 after Christ, far away from here, central Mexico, bigger people, killing people, mercenaries, bloody guys known as Toltecas or Toltecs, different tribe. They abandoned a big city there. They came here and invaded the Mayans. They conquered them and put under control. Amigos, everything changed forever. They changed a lot of stuff but mainly three. First of all, everywhere you go on Chichen Itza, you can see round columns. That means it's local one. But if you see square pillars, that's on the middle of Mexico. They change the architecture. Second change is very important. They introduce a new god. And the new one can to be a snake? A feather serpent. Yeah. Okay. Like a dragon. By the way, with a long name, <laughs> not easy to say for most of the Mexicans. I'm sure. <laughs> for tourists, that's impossible. <laughs> this is the name. Se Acar Topinsen Quetzalcoatl Te Huesca can't Ah, that one. That is yeah. it. <laughs> and that means the Lord eagle and serpent ascending for the sun. But that is not Mayan language. That is Nahuatl. It used to be the language of the Aztecs, Mexica, Chichimecas, Toltecas, what is Mexico City right now, where those guys come from. So, I know that lots of people come to see Chichen Itza to see the serpent. It's very famous. All right. But it's not Mayan. <laughs> it was introduced by Tolteca people into Chichen Itza the year 1000 after Christ. We got it? Yep. Of course, Mayan people, they accept the serpent with no other way because we were under control of the Toltecs when they changed the name to the local language and they start to call the serpent Kulkan and that means the Mayan language Feather Serpent. I know this is very famous in every book, magazine, videos. I never said Kulkan, the main Mayan god. <laughs> Sorry, but that's the commercialized way. I like trying to be honest. Thing. The serpent is not mine. We got it? Third change. And very important. And this one, I need your help. Please let the people know after this the reality. As soon as the new guys came here in the Bay of the Mayans, it's exactly the beginning of human sacrifice. Oh. So, human sacrifice is a reality. But we must have always told, take a time, not Mayans. What about the Mayans? They offer flowers, vegetables, fruits, sometimes little animals in offering places. Any question, please? Are you okay? <laughs> We've fallen so far. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mayans, they are here. They never disappear. The mayor population are mestizos. What does that mean? Mixed blood, mixed language, and mixed religion because they were conquered by the Spaniards. But uh, there are also people pure blood, pure language. And some of them behind Cova eat the highest vegetation. Some of them still worship the rain god because it depends on this for rain, for agriculture. 
so they are here. They never disappear physically. What disappear is just a knowledge. Right. When they start to lose the knowledge, when they were conquered by the Toltecas, they were forced to accept a new God, they were forced to accept the human sacrifice, and they start to change their mentality. And then later, let's go and see it this way. Toltecas came here and they changed architecture. They changed the religion and they start to kill people. Later, the Spanish people came here, they conquered them. They changed one more time the architecture. They changed one more time the religion. And they keep killing people. Amigos, the last time you know what happened? Some of the Mayans, they were not agree with the Christianity. And they can't be rebels. So they, they ran away from here, they went to Cova, because that people were never conquered by the Spanish around there. And they had a base, the rebel base, far away into the vegetation. And these people conquered by the Spanish here, they came to the enemy of that people into the vegetation. So we can say Maya kills against Maya because of religion for a long time in this part of Mexico. A lot of people were killed on both sides. So, what was the most important at that time? Preserve the territories. <laughs> Trying to preserve the territories. Of course, they forgot about astronomy, mathematics, medicine, architects, and they lost the knowledge forever. But physically, they never disappeared. They are here. It's a huge population. Thank you. Normally, this kind of trees always connect into the freshwater underground river. We can say this is the way to find drinking water. <laughs> she looks like a tree like this, huge one. I'm sure the river is right there under. Huh. And for Mayan people, the underground river was the infraworo. What's the what? The infra, the infraworo. Okay. Which is the half of the god, god of death. Each river here is going that way. No one is going this way. And for Mayan people, where the sun is coming from, that is the entrance to the Mayan paradise. So, when somebody passed away, they believe and they go downstairs, underground, and the God of Day take them to the Mayan paradise where the sun is coming from in the morning. So, the tree is very respectful when they start in Mexico. The last branch is a little one in the middle, pointing up to the sky. The Mayan people believe that this is connected to the name Mayan Creator, the name God. And the reason branches were presented the 13 different Mayan heavens. And by the way, back to Mayan times when Tulum was a harbor, this is where they used to make heavy Lombi canoes because it's hollow in the middle. Oh, uh, okay. You can see it's very special tree. <laughs> middle of Mexico, we call this one. Pochote. In this part of Mexico and Spanish, Seba. And for local Mayan people, the Mayan language, Yaache. The stone wall was surrounded the whole north side of Chichen Itza as a ceremonial center. So the people that never lived there, that's a ceremonial center. <laughs> the people were here outside in little huts all over. So what does that mean? No one stone place in the whole thing was a house. Everyone is public place. At that time, the people who ruled the classes was the religious people. They had a mess in democracy. In this case, this was not a monarchy. Just choose the best baby who got born during the eclipses, solstice or equinox. They moved them. The baby away from the families forever. But after this, the baby lived for a long, long time with a piece of wood in the front head. One here, and one more here. Every day after this, they tie the head very hard. For a long time, every day. After a long time, they can to be flat head this way and long head this way. Only religious people were. So we can say, Religious people, they were different physically against others. 
By the way, when they come to be a little bit older, a few years later, they use the stingray tails to make a hole in every dental pieces, little hole in it, and then they introduce a small pieces of volcanic rock as a mouth decoration on the whole thing. Jay, Malakai, turquoise, obsidian. And most of them they were painting in blue turquoise the whole body. So we can say for sure the blue guys with that kind of head walking in there, that was the most respectable people. The religious people, they were the astronomers, mathematicians, wise men, and men. That's a lot of steps. Yeah. Hear that? Weird. <laughs> it sounds like a bird up there or something like that. It's a very reverb yeah. thing. The human beings, this will be so crowded. Now, is it is the echo coming from inside that door? Where is the... Uh, I don't understand why it's getting that sound. Believe it or not, it's not an echo. It's not an echo. Yeah. What is it then? It's an acoustic. It's just the main door. This is what happened. And nowadays, when we talk about a bunch of people, we need a speaker and microphones, right? Can you imagine at that time, we have a special ceremonials. Lots of people here in this plaza all over. You have some of them. And just one guy that on top facing north to speak. So that sound came down this level and it spread out on the whole plaza. It's a special acoustic for ceremonials. Mm. Amigos, of course, to build this pyramid, they took a long time. If you come on the left hand side, there are nine platforms, you see? The beginning of this pyramid was like this. But after 52 years, according to the time of Venus, they had a new one. After 52, oh. they took over 400 years to finish the whole pyramid. Do you remember the time of Venus? This is 9 times 52. Okay. So they have built that time of Venus and they built everything to each platform. But right there in front, there are 91 steps. Four sides to make 364 total. Mm -hmm. But there is one more on top facing north, so total is 365. Okay. Sounds very similar to our calendar. Right, right. But it is not. Into the religious calendar, the last month is only five days. <laughs> <laughs> and they call Wayeb. And Wayeb means in Mayan language, evil. Oh. Bad things. During those five days, they get their kids, women's, all men's, meals, water, and they went to the caves underground, hiding. No human beings were allowed to be here outside because they got off the underworld. They came out for five days. In Mexico, when we like to scare the kids, we say it in the Spanish, I be in el coco. <laughs> what coco means? They're not evil things. I don't know how do you say it in English when you like to scare the kids. <laughs> what about the Mayans? They said, Coten Guayep. The evil thing is coming. Ah. <laughs> you know, Guayep is a bad thing, that's why. <laughs> Amigos, back to the Mayan times, the whole thing was, I mean, the whole city was multicolored. They never paint the blocks. First of all, they protected the plaster, and they paint the plaster. Main colors. Red, blue turquoise, the blue, black, purple, yellow, and white. They get painted from insects, flowers, seashells, the bark of the tree, and volcanic growth. How do we know that? There are a few ways. First one, everything underground is in perfect condition. If we make a hole, we can see the plaster with a paint on it. Second one, I'll show you in a few more minutes the original painting. It's still there in some of the places. Okay. Ready to play football? <laughs> <laughs> 25 years ago, the Institute of Anthropology History in Mexico and the National Tourist Office, they invite archaeologists, anthropologists, historical people, and official tour guys because somebody played the game here. We were trying to prove something. 
most of the people that had a mind in the Mayan people played the game with the hip, the arm, the knee, or the heads. And most of you, they had that information for this place. Those guys that play the game with the hip, the arm, the hip, trying to use a heavy revival ball into those stone rings on both sides for two hours, <laughs> and they couldn't. Not even half away. Oh, jeez. So what does that mean? They had two games. Ah, okay. The one with the hip is pure Mayan. It's not here because this is Tolteca area, you remember? Mm-hmm. What is the pure Mayan one? The oldest part of Chichen Itza that way. It's a small place. With a reclining platform like this at the end of the stone ring is the one with the plate with the hip. Check it out here. This is a huge one. The biggest one all over Mesoamerica, actually. Oh. And it's standing. When the Toltecs came here, they changed the rules of the game. But it's not a Mayan guy about this big anymore. <laughs> it's a big guy. Tolteca. And they use armadillo shell and the whole body like a protection, like an American football player. Mm -hmm. Huge headrest, piece of bone across the nose, and one hand, a wood racket to pick up the ball like higher life. Okay. And the other one along with the stick to hit the ball. You see it's different? Yeah. The Mayan one on that side was a ceremonial, not a competition. And that one is without human sacrifice. This is the one with human sacrifice because it's all taken. The place looks like this. We're going to make a line here in the middle, but it's an imaginary one. Okay. Six players on this side, and six on the other side. Six and six front to front. Everyone with armadillo sail as a protection, the wood racket, and the wood stick. In that platform, one of the captain. In the other platform, the other captain. So six and six, twelve, fifteen, fourteen guys play the game. But these people in the middle, they never try to introduce the ball into the stone ring. These people just play for the captains on both sides. So the guys in charge were those. They use the racket in this way. And with a wood stick, they introduce the ball into the stone ring. We call this one pop tapo. The Mayan one with the hip is ulama. <laughs> Ancient game. When the game was over, one of the two cats, nobody forced him. But he son, he came to the center of the field and always facing that way with the sun is coming from, which is the entrance to the Mayan paradise. He offered his own head. Oh wow! The question is, is this, uh, the question is for you. Who's the one who loses the head? An idea? I don't know. <laughs> Any opinion? <laughs> right. Okay. Wait. Say it again. So the captain came down. He offered his but head. His own. His own head. This was the losing captain. Uh, no, no, the, I'm asking wait. you. <laughs> was it the winning captain that offered us? Winning for you? Winner. Losing for you? A loser. <laughs> Winner. Winner? Depends how many tequilas. The <laughs> <laughs> Vegas. This guy, he was choosing to be a player he was when he was baby. Actually, they separated the kids from their families and they training the whole time. They had athletic guys, young guys. They were prepared in one day to have the chance to play the best game of their life. Amigos, when they lose the head, the blood comes in that, this way, and they were pretending to travel to the Mayan paradise as a gift for them. <laughs> you remember that connecting to the circle? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These people, they believe in the reincarnation. They came back one more time to this place. Right, and right. Okay. Venus. So this was the honor, and the only people who had honor is the winning guy. Ah. So the winning guy is the guy, is the guy who loses the game. Those places on both sides are like this. A lot of people come to see the game. Of course, they invite different tribes, and that was the place for these visitors. Mm -hmm. And the high priest, the main one, was there, the ah. along in the middle. Common people there on top, also on the other side, and right here. 
and this one in front, the rest of the priests, okay. musicians and dancers. Uh -huh. Amigos, how do we know all this? Wow, yeah. I'm so sure about it. <laughs> These people, they left information on their carving. Come with me and I'll show you. Oh, check it out, this guy. Here. This one. Mm -hmm. You see the whole thing? Mm -hmm. Beautiful headdress. Mm -hmm. Here is the face. Okay. Did you see that it's a piece of bone across the nose? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Armadillo shell around the neck. Mm -hmm. The arm, the hip, and the knee, and then under off. But the most important, this hand, there is something like a snake head. You see it? There's something what? Like a snake head. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. That was the wood racket that they used to pick the ball. Oh. <laughs> Into the veil, that is a stone. Uh, the stick. Right. The wood stick where they used to hit the ball. Yep, yep. Okay. This is one of the regular players. But the most important is the next guys come here. Why does the stick have a head on it? Looks like it has some sort of head. <laughs> yeah, which the creator with just decorations. Uh, some of the Mayan gods. <laughs> okay. Oh, over here, please. Over here. Look at how this guy. This one here. Oh, the whole figure. Mm -hmm. Same armadillo shell, piece of bone across the nose. But the most important thing, if you see in this hand, there is a knife. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the other hand coming down this way. There is a human head with blood going down. You see? Oh, yeah. yeah. He's the head of the guy yep. who loses the head. And the other side is the guy who loses the head in this position, underneath, without head. You see him? Not seeing that one. I think I see the blood going. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. Okay. Here is the neck, and the blood is coming up. Right. Oh, it's like, right. like it's squirting out. Yep. There in the middle. I don't see the head over here. It's this is the face There's his nose. Oh, there I see it now. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, wow. There, into the circle, there is one skull. You see him? Uh huh. Uh huh. Yep. Okay. That is the god of death. His name was Unapku. Yeah. But he's speaking. Right. Into archaeology, uh, this represents sound. We call Boluta. So the god of death is speaking about the ceremony when the game was over. Something which is very curious. So we know. That's a loud clap. That's a show. <laughs> <laughs> Amigos. Number seven is the perfect number, right? All over the planet, as we know. Same for Mayan people. There are seven guys that way. Seven this way. Mm -hmm. Seven line, blood going up. Oh. Same vegetation. Seven are the triangles when the serpent is descending. And I suppose that if, if I clap here in the middle, we must hit seven, seven X. Oh, oh yeah. 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 When they hit the ball with a wood stick like this, can you imagine the sound? What's like this? You hear the taka taka taka? Uh -huh. This is where the name's coming from. <laughs> <laughs> it's anything. What's the ball made out of? Rubber one. Was it rubber? Yeah, really? it was two, two sides. One was mostly like a, the softball, we used to play softball. Yeah. Uh -huh. And there is also a bigger one. So heavy. Uh, the impact was strong. That's why they use protection all over. Okay. Amigos, the name of this place is Sompantli. But that is not Mayan language, that is Nahuatl, where the Toltas people came from. And Sampantli means cemetery. Hmm. They call cemetery because there is a skull in every block. But what's the reality? There is any skeleton in there. No? During the excavation, they couldn't find no one piece of human bone and the whole thing. So what is this in the reality? A memorial fence on the name of the guy who lost the head oh. playing that game. Okay. Uh, okay. Captain. <laughs> so they played the game for about 300 years. They killed lots of people. Wow. <laughs> How do we know this is very Toltec? You see on the skull there is something like a neck. You see it? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But that is a piece of wood. They are connecting one to other through the wood stick. Very middle of Mexico. Of course, the main entrance to this 
memorial fence is on the other side, which is always where the sun is coming from, the Mayan paradise, Shival. The most important things are pointing that way in this part of Mexico. This can be a problem when the Mayan people will come to the Spanish. Some of them, sooner or later they accept the Christianity, but some of them, they were rebels against the Christian. They were separate fighting each other. The first Catholic priest they built a huge cathedral at Valladolid, which is the second biggest town around here. The building was pointing that way. Huge cathedral. The Mayan rebels were offended because it was facing to the Mayan paradise. They came to the town and they destroyed and burned the whole thing. <laughs> Later, 18th centuries, the Franciscan priests, they rebuilt the place with a new building and they make it all facing north. And they stop with the problem. No big deal. They don't offense anybody else. Okay. No one cut the trick point that way in this part of Mexico. That offends the local man. Do you know that? <laughs> now you know. Okay? Let's go this way. Now, there's, there's no bodies buried in there? No one. No one. Okay. It's just a memorial. Memorial to the yeah. ones who lost their heads. He's the god of death. Punapku or Puch. Going to the paradise. But uh, this happened when the game was over. You remember the guy who was pretending to travel to the Mayan paradise? Mm -hmm. His head is there. Oh, yeah. See him? Ah, I see it. Yep. You can buy the God of Death to the paradise. <laughs> with a few weapons and some of nice going with him as a guard surrounding the God of Death all the way down to the paradise. <laughs> Sounds like a very mystery and kind of scary thing. Mm -hmm. But they believe in that. And, <laughs> and the other part there is a snake, you see? Going yeah. that way? Mm -hmm. Same. But this snake is not that one we saw right there. In this case, you see the form of the snake is like this? Mm -hmm. This representing water on the ground. Water going to the I don't know. And it's all under everything else. That's right. Okay. <laughs> this is amazing carving. And it's in good condition. Mm -hmm. It's not very common to see an eagle. We see some falcons, but not exactly an eagle everywhere. So that eagle on the right hand side represents the invaders, the new people coming from Toltecas. Uh, interesting. If you see each one is in this position and they're eating a heart, you see it? Uh huh. That is exactly the new deal between Mayan and Toltecas. That's representing the beginning of human sacrifice. Uh -huh. And that happened with them on top, in the middle. Amigos, human sacrifice is a reality in this part, but it's not like Hollywood said. They don't kill lots of people, and not every day. One was enough. Every year. Normally that happened after a long dry season when rainy was necessary only. This was not an honor. They're hunting people for this. Which people? Enemies. Because it's still take a time, they were divided by clans and they were enemies. Amigos, they bring the prison there on top. They left this part of the back in a small block like this. They used a knife to cut it just and they took the heart out. What happened after that? They took away the heart from here in the pottery and the other side. And top of the other building on top, there is a recliner platform like this. Mm -hmm. And this is stuck with the left, the human heart. That's offered to Renga. Okay. The human sacrifice is a reality, but of course, in this way. We're not prepared to understand the human sacrifice. Why human sacrifice? Let's start to give the answer. Human sacrifice is not from here, right? Came from the middle of Mexico. Okay. And the middle of Mexico is very common to have gold, silver, and copper. Mm -hmm. They had a lot of metal all over. Yeah. So the Mayan, at uh, the Tolteca, uh, sorry, Aztec time or Tolteca time, were gold everywhere. With any values. They were trying to offer to the guys the best way they got. They have gold everywhere, silver, copper was not enough for the guys. It was everywhere, it was common. Mm -hmm. And then they offer the best way they got is their blood. Right. Okay. Their own heart. 
but they came here with that mentality and they influenced the Mayans. That's the problem. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the Mayans, after this, came to be more military position, more uh, violent uh -huh. after this. It was with the kill people oh. when the rain was necessary. <laughs> the guy who led the group to this part of Mexico, coming from the middle of Mexico, the Meros, the priest. His name was Quetzalcoatl II. He was a high priest of Tula, which is right next to Mexico City right now. So he came here as a human being. But as soon as they conquered the Mayans, they put him in control. They had a ceremony in the middle and they said, I'm a new god. <laughs> and uh, Mayans, they get that idea because this guy said, I'm the serpent, I'm the sun, I'm the bird, I'm the Jawa, I'm everything. <laughs> and they're carving this. Check it out this. It's a combination of many things. You see in the middle this the human face? Yep. Mm -hmm. But the Thomas serpent one. Oh, uh, yep. It's coming out of the Jawa mouth this way. Yeah. Which is in this position. Mm -hmm. But it's called by feather, you see? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And that part is serpent skin. And the last part is beans, the blood. Amigos, this is what, the one we call Se Akalto Pilsen Quetzalcoatl Te Huascantliputli. That one. That one we call today Kukulka, <laughs> which is the new god for the serpent. But the guy who introduced this idea was Quetzalcoatl II was the priest coming from the middle of Mexico. What we see there, on the right hand side, there are original colors from that time, you see? I see the blue. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Blue turquoise, red, and purple. They get painted from insects, flowers, seashells, a bathroom tree, and volcanic rock. Everyone was multicolored, it was a beautiful thing at that time. So over the years, it's just all worn yeah, off. Yeah, because the humanity and mainly the hurricanes all of this. Okay. Mm. Oh, okay. This was the dancing floor and where they play music. They don't, very special ceremony. What kind of ceremony? That happened exactly after the laundry season when raining was necessary. There in the main plaza, they choose the nicest children. Little ones, and the youngest ladies, the beautiful ones. And they took them that way, all the way down to the sacrificial well. They sacrificed them. Oh. At that time, they play music here. They use she shells, cone shells, <laughs> but also those artifacts. Each one produced different sound. That was a music instrument. Okay. And over there inside. I'd like to remind you this was destroyed by Augusto Le Prenjum from France, 1800s. So this is restoration. Oh, okay. It took a long time, but they restored it because they got the original blocks. Huh. Right. Ready to jump? We will jump in here. <laughs> <laughs> Sacrifice. Facing north, this way. Every underground river, the first water is going. That way. Mm -hmm. No one is going that way. If you go in front of your hotel by the morning, early in the morning, where the water is quiet, when you see the first sunlight coming up from the ocean, you will allowed to see a combination, about seven to nine combination of blue turquoise water. That is fresh and salt water because every three rivers go to the Caribbean side this way. Oh, okay. But what about pollution? Is it practice human sacrifice? They used to sacrifice, I mean, the pollution like this all over to get drinking water. <laughs> but the water is coming this way, and this is the last one outside the city. Right. They pollute the last one, and they send the water that way. You know why? It was still take a time, and the enemies were there <laughs> with the Mayan hiccups. They pollute the water and send to the enemies. It was military strategic also. So what happened here? During the rainy, uh, dry season when rainy was necessary, they are the main part of the choosing nicest children, some of them, and put them there in that platform. 
we use a square stone and everyone would kill with a knife. So when they over into the first water hole was the body dead already. They were not alive anymore. It was often to a rain guy. The youngest ladies, they, they use a long white tonic, heavy things around the body like stone pieces, gold pieces. Mm -hmm. And then they push the legs alive into the first water hole. The sink and disappear. How do we know that? First one, they left a mural. How about that? Mm -hmm. Second, 1967, the Mexican archaeologist Roman Piña Chan, he removed away from the bottom of the place 122 skeletons. And we could go down. Wow. Children and young ladies. They are in protection in Mexico City right now in the National Anthropology Museum. What I'm trying to say to you, human sacrifice is a reality. But I want to ask you help about this. It's necessary to let the people know that this is tol teca time, not Mayans. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Because this is post classic. Late classic, at the beginning of Chichen Itza, they offer flowers, they offer fruits, and offering places in the one without we going later that way. Mm -hmm. Amigos, all over Yucatan Peninsula there are almost 5,000 cenotes. I said 5,000, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. About 1,200 were explored already. The rest still under that vegetation, all over. And most of the places like this, there are the skeletons. But that is not human sacrifice. That's by accident. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you know what happened? Around the 60s, 50s to 60s, an American guy came here his name was Samuel Adams. You hear about this guy? Very famous? Mm. No. You will remember. Listen carefully. He was an American explorer, going everywhere here alone. He went into the little towns, and he saw the Mayan guys always chewing something. Yummy, yummy. And then he asked them, what are you always eating the whole day? And the answer was a Mayan language because at that time most of the people didn't speak any other language, just Mayan. Mm -hmm. And they said, chiclet, chiclet. <laughs> Chi means Mayan language, mouth. Clet is movement. Mm -hmm. They were choosing to suffer the local tree. This American guy had an idea to make money with that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> he organized the first unions of the sub collector in this part of Mexico, by the way. <laughs> He buy the whole production of sap, so the local people start to make good money from it because of sap of the tree. And some of the guys, they get the tools, the mills, and they went far away into the vegetation looking for the sap, but they were along. And some of those are not like this, but not like this, I mean, they were covered as a roof with a little holes, <laughs> covered lips or branches. Mm -hmm. And some of them, they fell down, Underground disappeared forever, they couldn't have those are the skeletons. Because they're like this deep yeah. and you didn't know it. Oh, okay. So, some of the skeletons is because they were by accident right there. Yeah. They were along in the pitch and they fell down. By the way, Samuel Adams sent the stuff from the tree to the United States. They had a sugar, a flavor, a nice presentation, and was still like Chicklets Adams. Uh. <laughs> Just today, Wrigley's. Wrigley's. Gotcha. Amigos, I'd like to remind you everywhere we see the square pillars, that's the Dorteca time. Mm -hmm. We well, did the round columns, that's the Mayan time. <laughs> that was the market, but that market was alone. That place was not there, and the firma was not there at that time. Because it's the oldest market all over my land. The oh, biggest wow. one also. Now, was there a roof over that? Yeah, each each uh, column was supporting a thatched roof at that time. Okay, was it like a But in the middle, it's a round one like this, a circle one. In the middle was a huge plaza where they organized the commercial trade. Okay. We go in a minute that way. Now, let's talk about a little bit about this one. What is this for? Do you remember the guy who were killed there? Mm -hmm. They put the human heart in the pottery, and they were running with the human heart this way. Can you come a little bit this way? Mm -hmm. 
climb up on top. And they left a human heart, which is the planet idol in the middle. You see him? Uh, I see him, yep. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. The messing they get. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those two pillars and the very top, they are very special. You see the last part of the pillar, the top? Mm -hmm. There is something. That is a serpent tail. You see him? Not the tail is a serpent. At the top of the pillars? No. Yeah, yeah, the, the two in the middle. Uh huh. So, yeah. Oh, that's the, their tail. Yeah. Oh, oh, I it's see it. Yeah, I see it now. It's yes. a okay. serpent head with okay. a mouth yeah, up and yeah. facing the Ah, tail. I follow. Okay. okay. So we got two serpents in the middle. Yep. Okay. okay. And that is a giant adult, which is the message of the gods sending the offering to the ring. Okay. Amigos, I remember this when this was open. It's amazing. There is a huge middle in the inner chamber. Middle about human sacrifice. By the way, it's the biggest one. Three guys holding the prisoner. One holding the legs, one holding the hands, and the third one with a knife taking hard the human. Hmm. Amigos, of course, same history, like each one is closed forever because they repeat us. Right. Uh, behind this, a lot of places into that vegetation waiting for excavation. This never finished. When was the last discovery? It's two years ago. Right there. Let's check it out. There is oh, okay. Oh, nice. Way. So, for a long time, we believed that this building was in the flat formation. But as you can see right now, there is called one more building underground. Oh, wow. And I'd like to remind you, the last discovery is the freshwater hole in the middle and the small pyramid inside. That is the roof of the big building underground. <laughs> wow. Excavation. It's not keep going, it's stopped by the moment because the people is working in South part of Chichen Itza. You know why? Very soon, this will be a huge archaeological place up into this. But uh, the last place is like a, almost five miles away from here that way. That's a huge one. Mm -hmm. So in the future, we'll be necessary to stay here at least one night to see the whole thing. That's why today they're preparing good hotels around. Oh, okay. 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 And they got a, uh, not as big one, but they had an airport right now. And they're preparing all kinds of stuff because a lot of things are coming because that will be open very soon. And the excavation keep going. Just to give an idea what I'm talking about. Yucatan Peninsula is like this. About six years ago, the institute, they took satellite pictures. And they remarked with red points, just the big buildings on the ground. Wow. They didn't count the small ones, just the big ones. And the official counting in this moment is from the Caribbean side all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico into Yucatan Peninsula, 4,862 huge buildings waiting for excavation. Oh my goodness. Wow. So what you see here is just one little thing. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Time is not enough. People is not enough, and of course money never will be enough for this. Mm -hmm. By the way, I don't know if you know, but at this moment it's under excavation, the one will be the biggest pyramid all over my land. How big? Three times this big. Wow. wow. It's here. That is Central America. That is the bottom line of Mexico uh -huh. and Guatemala. It's in the side of Guatemala, but it's close to the border. This was a combat accident seven years ago. <laughs> it was a big fire into the vegetation of Guatemala. We lost the control of the fire, and they asked international help. Oh, no. One of the volunteers was Richard Hansen. He was a he's archaeologist from Harvard University. <laughs> but he was in the helicopter. You know make a sound inspection, you know, as a topography, things like that. But he mentioned to the pilot, there is something on the valley, in the whole valley, which is, uh, I mean, it's kind of weird. There is a huge hill under vegetation, but it's in the wrong place. <laughs> he feel that. Mm -hmm. They control the fire, and he has helped the local people. 
they went together with a special team. He remarked an area and he said, make an excavation here. The second day they discovered the steps carving. And that will be the big experiment all over my wow. life. Wow. Remember the name, will be very famous. <laughs> and the name will be Danta. Danta? Yeah. Do you know what Danta means? <laughs> in South America, mainly in the Amazonas, the biggest animals looks like a baby elephant. Okay. Tiper. Tapir. How do you say in English? Tapir. Tiper. Tiper. The one with the lowness. The name of that animal in Central America is Danta. Okay. <laughs> That's why the name of the Because okay. <laughs> <laughs> So remember this name will be Wait, they're famous. underground. That was a hill under vegetation like a normal hill uh, and they were just like there shouldn't be a hill there there's so take the hill take the dirt away from the hill yeah, and there's a pyramid that's not a common transportation mm -hmm. Chichen Itza came to be an important population but it had a new problem they got water but in this part of Mexico this is 365,000 square miles from the ocean to the ocean without any metals at all and there is no volcanoes at all, no one. Amigos, this is the only material all over. Stone. Limestone. Mm -hmm. Very soft. Right. So volcanic rock and metal was necessary for tools, weapons, or decoration. But Chichen Itza did discover something and the rest of the people didn't have that time. They didn't know side. They produce marine salt. And the people who controlled the marine salt, that was a powerful people because that was the only way to preserve meat, fish, and a lot of stuff. Yeah. So Chichi and Ita get the control of the marine salt here, and they make two harbors. One was in the Gulf of Mexico, which is today Chilean, next Merida, and one on the Caribbean side, which is today Tulum. They get the sea salt through Cova all the way down to Tulum, they use a long big boats, they came, they send the sea salt all the way down to Central America this way. And they trade the marine salt by go by a J Malakai to Coast of Sea of Sidon back to Chichen Itza. <laughs> Same on the other side, they send the marine salt with a big boat through the Gulf of Mexico and they trade the marine salt by gold, silver and copper back to Chichen Itza. And finally did they build canals to get from Chichen Itza no? to the coast? I walked they and then got straight boats. Mayan road. Okay, okay. Stone fence on both sides. I'll okay. show you one that way. Okay. Amigos, do you remember I said they used money at that time? Shishel and cocoa beans. Mm -hmm. At that time, and also nowadays, this low land connecting to the Gulf of Mexico was the place where they get the cocoa beans. <laughs> they used the marine salt and they trade the cocoa beans back to Chichen Itza. And finally, they put under control the whole my land into the commercialized situation. <laughs> and it's going to be the biggest market all over my land into the Lake Classic to the Coast Classic. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> At that time, there was a touch roof around the whole thing with the market, with the product. Right here in the main plaza, this was the people in charge to make the arrangements, you know, negotiation. They came from all over the area. By the way, if you come back in the future, I have a recommendation for you. That area is amazing to visit. Where the Not salt stuff hotels, is? The small ones, the small fishing, fishermen village. But it's an amazing place. Rio Lagartos. This was the oldest part of Chichen Itza. In the market. The market is the time of this one. At that time, Listen from which is the observatory was multicolored. The whole thing looks like one, but in the reality there are five places. If you count platform by platform, there is one, two, three, four, five, it's the round one. Mm -hmm. Everyone was painting a different color. It was multicolored oh. place. Beautiful one. Wow. Amigos, if you see with attention outside the round building on the left hand side you see those single rocks mm -hmm. it's a rock on the left hand side and there's some others that way 
that like this. And each one was a water mirror. Oh, okay. It's a cycle with a storm that came in front of the water mirror with a piece of our paper and a pencil. And at night of day, they figured out what happened there around the cosmos. According with the information of water mirror, they put in a paper day and night, day and night for a long time. And this way they figured I had a lot of stuff like equinox, solstice, they changed the station. And that's the way I had to make one of the best calendars all over the planet. <laughs> Sol King calendar, which is today only 26 seconds in the year. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> they did a lot of paper in this way. They get the knowledge in this way. But when the Spanish people came, the second Catholic bishop trying to use the Catholic religion because some of the guys that were rebels against the religion, he said, I have an idea to put these people under control. We're going to collect each piece of our paper, the Mayan codices, from all over my life. And they did. The Spanish army, they collect from all over my land over 3,000 pieces of our paper with the Mayan writing information. We wow. get the knowledge. This guy, he put the whole stuff in front of Catholic Church and in front of everybody, he bought the whole thing. Oh. <laughs> in a few minutes, he finished with hundreds of years of investigation of the astronomers and mathematicians. Yeah. Today, they are three alive, but no one is in Mexico. One is in Paris, France, one in Madrid, Spain, and the best one, which is like a big accordion, like 24 pieces, is the one in Dresden, Germany. The work was destroyed because religion stuff that way. Amigos, we cannot see from here, of course, but as surrounding the Rome building, there is a channel like this where they used to collect rainy water. Mm -hmm. And there is a channel coming this corner underground. And they send the rainy water all the way down that way. There, behind that little stone hill, there is a rainy water collector. But that was not drinkable water. It was holy water. Because right next is the steam bar with the tip purification during the special ceremonies. This is an amazing place. All right, we just finished our tour of Chichen Itza and we are wrapping things up to get back in the car and see what our next stop is. I think next stop is uh, lunch. Lunch is next stop? No? Back to the diving in the cenotes. To the cenotes we go. What are we doing, Sarah? Going in cold water. Cold water? What kind of cold water? A cenote. Jumping in the cenotes! Here we go! All right, second stop of this journey is Selva Maya Cenote. We are here and in the water. And once you get in, it's not too cold. You just got a cliff dive to get into it and get used to it. Don't try to creep your way into it. That'd, that'd be a bad idea. Got a couple catfish in here. Not a whole lot of life. Some cool stalactites overhead and the coolest waterfall ever. All right, we're wrapping things up after a very successful trip, a wonderful trip to Cancun and uh, we did some excellent scuba diving. We saw the uh, cenotes. We went and explored the uh, Chichen Itza Mayan ruins. And now we have some awesome t-shirts. Don't hold it up. We have some awesome t-shirts. So been there, done that, got the t-shirt. And now we are boarding our plane to get back to the States. So calling it a conclusion. Excellent trip. Excellent trip. Perfect. Perfect.
Thank you.